America's most talked about program. Uh, we, uh, we have an especially uh, wonderful guest with us. Uh, this is the famous Hollywood columnist whose name is familiar to everyone all over the world, the very wonderful, lovely Luella Parsons. Hello, Luella. Hello. Thank you so much. Very sweet of you to uh, come around and see our show. You know, I wouldn't miss your show for anything in the world. Thank you. Coming from you, we're very, very flattered about that. Thank you very I much. I brought some friends here. You know Jimmy McHugh. I see Hi, one Laura. pal here. <laughs> I see a couple others are going to meet in a minute. This is Jimmy McHugh. Jimmy, it's real uh, wonderful to see you. The last time you folks out there looked at this face, he was seated up there in our chair of honor. That's, uh, that is the last time you were here at the show about two years ago. Jimmy, Quite wonderful true. to see you. I have another guest, too. You sure Bibi have. Daniels Hello. Hello. B.B. Daniels and Ben Lyon, ladies and gentlemen. All, all, the, uh, all the way from England, two great American motion picture stars whose radio show over the British Broadcasting Company, Life with the Lions, is number one. The number one show in all England. Let's America applaud for <laughs> Bean and Ben. Well, they're still Americans in London. Sure glad to see you both. Thank really, you, it's well, what, wonderful to see you. Thanks, darling. What brings you and your charming wife? to Hollywood, Ben, just a little vacation? Well, we're on a vacation, Ralph, and while we're here, we want to see all the top TV shows, and naturally, we had to come to see yours. Thank you, sir, very much you for are. the very yeah. kind words. We're glad you included ours, uh, Ben. We have a great uh, show for you tonight, and uh, I've, have you ever seen This Is Your Life? Yes, we have. We've have seen you? it twice, and it's wonderful. Good. Just wonderful. Well, I, I think you'll enjoy it even more tonight, B.B., uh, because tonight, This Is Your Life, B.B. Daniel's Life. <laughs> skeletons out of the cupboard. Uh, yes. I, I've been away so long, they won't remember me. Are you kidding? <laughs> they, they won't remember you. They remember you funny, darling. Come on, it's an inspiring life. We'll <laughs> learn all about it if you'll come on up on our stage here, our Hazel Bishop stage in the Chair of Honor. Uh, and incidentally, Luella, where are you, darling? Luella Parsons, thank you so much uh, for inviting Bebe and Ben to our show. We'll see you and Ben a little later on when you take your all-important places. Thank you so much. Come along here, my goodness, between the covers of this book. All right, between the covers of this book, Bebe, we have many happy surprises for you. So come on up, sit in our chair of honor. Here we go. Wish her well again. She's shaking a little. <laughs> Come on, sit down here, please, and join us in bringing to life the career of not only one of the all-time great motion picture stars, but of a valiant and loyal woman who turned her back on comfort and safety to face the dangers of war as a heroic civilian. This is your life, B.B. Daniels Live. <laughs> This is the London Blitz, the year 1944. Ben is away with the 8th Air Force. You, Beebe, are living in the Hyde Park section of London. When the war clouds first rolled over Europe in 1939, you and Ben took your children, Barbara and Richard, back to America to safety. That's right. Now, what made you, come on, sit over here, girl, because we're going to learn all about this wonderful person that you are. What made you and Ben return to England to face the dangers of the Blitz, Beebe? Well, the British people have been so wonderful to us, and, well, we couldn't very well run out on them when they were in trouble. Wonderful thing. It's this loyalty and this courage that has characterized your whole life, Phoebe. I know of no one I know who did more than Miss Daniels to bring comfort and cheer in those frightful days. To us in Britain, Phoebe was the best part of Lend-Lease. <laughs> Well, now there's, uh, you were the best part of Lend Lease, that voice said. A voice out of your past, B.B., I doubt that you would recognize it, do you? Back in 1944, he was a Paddington Air Raid warden in his spare time, and he was badly hurt right outside your Hyde Park home, B.B. We brought him here to Hollywood all the way from Middlesex, England. He's a very important sculptor now. Here he is, Edward Pinto. <laughs> Yeah. 
Now, uh, will you tell us just what happened in that uh, bombing raid in 1944, Mr. Pinot? Well, my right leg was pretty badly smashed. And it was bleeding quite a lot. And I was carried into Miss Daniels' house, and Dr. Edward McGuire put a, an emergency dressing on it. Miss Daniels lent you her hot water bottle. She did. <laughs> this and is the bravest man in the world. The only thing he was worried about was whether he spotted the carpet or not. And I did. <laughs> and whether he could get my hot water bottle back to me. <laughs> you, you went to the hospital, of course. Yes. His leg wasn't the thing that... And, and the next day at the hospital, I had a lovely flowering plant from BB and a very cheery note wishing me well. And you got a note in return, didn't you, Bebe? Uh, a sort of a thank you note in which Mr. Pinto said in part, I'm feeling much more comfortable, thanks, and I'm only sorry my leg made such a mess of your carpet. Meanwhile, I have told my successor as group warden that if, he, if ever he feels any urge to get knocked out, he cannot do better than stage it in front of your door. Right. P.S. I forgot to mention they had to remove my leg. Thank you very much, Mr. Edward Pinto, for coming here all the way from Middlesex, England. All right, Bibi Daniels, let's turn the clock backwards now through the years to uh, 1901, January 14th to be exact. Where were you on that day, Bibi? <laughs> well, like all women, I hate to tell my age, <laughs> well, but that's when I was born. Yes, and uh, this was in Dallas, Texas. Dallas, Texas. You know, that's something I didn't know. Dallas, Texas, B.B. Daniels was born. Your mother and father had a traveling repertory company. That's right. They? And unhappily, they were separated when you were little more than a baby. So with your mother continuing her acting career, you spend your childhood either on the road with her yes. or at your uh, grandmother's ranch near La Crescenta, California. Yes, that's right. Sure. Were... Oh, we got the oh, whole group <laughs> on your kid. It was here that you started in school. It was yes. here that you learned to ride horseback on a little pony named Viva. Ah, how um, did you know that? <laughs> Bibi learned to dance and sing when she she was at a little about four years old, that's and that's her first appearance on the stage. Now, that's well, my mother. Yes, your mother, who was companion and friend, confidant and advisor in your childhood and maturity, a great actress in her own right, Phyllis Griffin Daniels, and here she is. <laughs> daughter here, sweetie, Ms. Daniels, come on now, and uh, I want you to tell us, excuse me, the Hazel Bishop lipstick, <laughs> this is what, we had that for you at the end of the program, oh, it's falling off, <laughs> uh, tell us what was uh, Bibi's uh, first part on the stage? Our first part was the, uh, the youthful Duke of York in Richard III. Uh -huh. Then uh, the next year, Then we came happened? to Los Angeles. And she played the little girl and the girl I left behind me. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, she's only five oh, years old then, right? That's right. Yeah, that's the monitor. You can watch. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't see myself. <laughs> Usually they don't see that toward about the end, you know. Oh, what is that? <laughs> yeah, you, can, you can watch what's happening. Now, when most children were uh, five years old, of course, they were playing with dolls. But you, Bibi, were playing serious roles book. on the stage. That's right. That's right. And Mother and I had some wonderful times together. Yes, well, there were hard times, too. Times when there were no engagements for Mother and you had to skimp and make tough work for yourself to make both ends meet. And still ever cheerful, ever hopeful, Mother taught you to face each day with a smile. What is it you used to say? Yes, the, if every, you think right, everything will be right. Right. She's been a wonderful mother. It was during one of these lean spells in the theater that Mother decided that you and she should try the flickers, wasn't it, Pete? Oh, yes. What she, was she? She said, you know what she said? What did she say? Well, when somebody suggested that we go into motion pictures, she said, I've done a lot of things in my life, but I will never stoop that low. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but yeah. she did, I think. Yeah, what, did. what was your uh, first picture? My first picture, uh, the, the Common Enemy. Mm -hmm. I think Betty Hart and Frank Montgomery were in that, and that was in 1909. You were just eight years old, Phoebe. And the Selig Film Company paid you and Mother $5 a day. <laughs> yes. By the time you're 11, you're a seasoned Western player in films with Hoot Gibson. See, they're looking at the picture of you oh, there. Oh, yes. And later, Jack Holt. Before you're 13, you're trying to talk Hal Roach into hiring you as Harold Lloyd's leading lady. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I'll never forget the day in my office. Bibi not yet a teenager, acting like a veteran. 
and without batting an eye, asking for $35 a week. Well, who's that? That's Hal. It's the man who gave you your first real opportunity in pictures, a real pioneer in film comedy, and still a giant in Hollywood. Your dear friend, baby, Hal Roach, Sr. Here he is. Did, I know it's a help? thrill for him to hear you say that. Did you pay Bebe the $35 a week she asked for? No, uh, he gave me $5 a day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And we had uh, to make one picture a week, too. Oh, my. But the uh, money was not the problem. The problem was that everybody thought Harold Lloyd's leading lady should be a blonde. Oh. I thought so, too, until I saw Bebe. Oh, so you hired her? Huh? I told him I'd wear a wig. <laughs> <laughs> no, I said I'd show her to Harold Lloyd first. Yes. And uh, what did he think, Mr. Roach? Well, why not let Harold speak for himself, Al? All right, Bebe, one of your very best friends and the man who has endeared himself to all moviegoers the world over, Mr. Harold Lloyd. Speedy. Speedy? That's, I never heard that. Oh, Harold. yes. How did you feel about Bebe the first time you saw her, Harold? Oh, I liked her immediately. And I told Hal so, and that was that. Yeah. So I got the job. <laughs> you, and you were a uh, leading lady for four years, isn't that right, yes, Harold? Yes, at least that, Ralph. Maybe a little longer. You know, in those old silent one real days, yeah. we used to make a picture a week. I guess Bebe and I have been in over <laughs> 200 pictures together. Yeah, there, you, there you are, there, the two of you. And Hal. You all remember? <laughs> and, and Hal, as far as I remember, I don't believe that B.B. ever had a, a double. You know, and the stunts were pretty rough in yeah. those days. Don't be mm. silly. If you couldn't do the stunt, you didn't get the part. <laughs> <laughs> Look, uh, Harold Lloyd was your uh, first real date. He what? was my first date. Oh. <laughs> you know, we used to uh, do a lot of dancing together, Ralph. Didn't we, B.B.? Yes, we certainly <laughs> did. Wasn't there one night in particular, Harold, at the Sunset Inn? Well, all the, all the dancing nights were particular. We had lots of fun. But, you know, I think it was during one of these contests that uh, B.B. attracted the attention of Mr. Cecil B. DeMille. Ah, oh, you yes. remember that night? Uh -huh. Yes, indeed. Yes. And uh, uh, Cecil B. DeMille was already one of Filmdom's uh, leading director-producers, wasn't he? Yes, yes, he certainly was. He still is. And I, it wasn't long after that that C.B. DeMille offered B.B. a contract to work with him. Mm -hmm. But... One of B.B.'s greatest virtues is loyalty. As I recall it, she, she thanked C.B., told him she appreciated the honor, but that she had a contract with Hal Roach and that she was very happy about it. Of course, the whole company loved B.B., and we were mighty happy about the way she felt. I'll bet you were, too, weren't you, Mr. <laughs> <laughs> yes, indeed. And Mr. DeMille rewarded your loyalty to Hal Roach and Harold by saying, well, if and when you're not under contract, give me a ring at the studio. That's right. right, he did. Thank you, Harold Lloyd and Hal Roach. We're seeing history go by here for films tonight. This chance meeting in 1917 with uh, Mr. DeMille, B.B., was to change the whole course of your life. As we turn the clock back to the year 1918. In this year, B.B., your contract with Hal Roach as Harold Lloyd's leading lady is soon to come up for renewal. But you have other hopes, haven't you? What did you want to be? I wanted to be a dramatic actress. Yes. Barely. Every, every yes. time I was, they put me back in comedy. <laughs> Barely 17, B.B. You face a major turning point in your life. And then you remember your brief interview with Cecil B. DeMille. Mr. DeMille wanted to be here in person with you tonight. But right now, he's in Egypt, as you know, uh, producing and directing another great epic motion picture, The Ten Commandments. However, before he left, he filmed a message to you. So here is the man who, for 40 years, has led the motion picture industry to ever greater achievements. Mr. Hollywood himself, Cecil B. DeMille. Here, dear. Well. Oh. Yes, I'm still an admirer, B.B. And I'm sorry not to be there to take a personal part in this great tribute to you. I've watched your, your useful life from that first day you came into my office wearing a suit you borrowed from your mother. <laughs> you remember? I remember. <laughs> and you did that to make you look older. I was old. And you thought you'd gotten away with it, too. <laughs> and I think maybe you did. 
because if I remember rightly, that was the day I engaged you for Paramount Pictures. That's right, it was. Do you remember what I said to you, B.B.? Yes. Just as you were leaving my office? You said, don't Next wear... Next time, don't wear, wear your mother's clothes. <laughs> <laughs> no. Did you work hard yes. to justify the faith that Jesse Lasky and I had in you. And before six months were up, you were a star. Not a, not a comedian, not, not a comic star, but a dramatic star. Since then, your star has never faltered. It's risen steadily to, to greater heights. I'm very happy, Bibi, to have had some part in your, your brilliant career and your, your inspiring life. God bless you, my dear. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Cecil B. DeMille. Good luck to you, sir, on the Ten Commandments. And we'll all be looking for Paramount's soon-to-be-released picture of Irving Berlin's White Christmas, starring Bing Crosby, Danny Kaye, Vera Ellen, and Rosemary Clooney. There it is, in 1929, you make movie history, B.B., and surprise the world with your singing in the title role of Rio Rita, RKO's great forerunner to the lavish musicals to come. Your co-star in that one was John Bowles, but in your brilliant career, you've played with practically all the greats. With Thomas Meehan, Gloria Swanson, Lila Lee in Male and Female. With Wallace Reed in The Dancing Fool and Nice People. With Rudolph Valentino in Monsieur Beaucaire. With Douglas Fairbanks in Reaching for the Moon. With John Barrymore in Counselor at Law. What a list of credits. And what... Girl. Many, many others, too. Your star, B.B. Daniels Lion, still rides high, high over the airways of England and high in our hearts here in America. If I may say so, B.B. star rides pretty high in my heart, too. Well, the one man in your life, B.B. My Daniels. old man, Ben. <laughs> ah, great star. <laughs> Who'll ever forget Ben Lyon and Gene Harlow in Hell's Angels, a great guy who, when you got married on June 14th, 1930, made it possible for all the press agents to quip Daniels in the Lion Den. Your <laughs> husband, Ben Lyon. <laughs> yourself quite a time chasing uh, this gal and catching up with her, didn't you? Man? I surely did, Ralph. I, I don't think B.B. held a very high opinion of me when we first met at the Montmartre Cafe in New York in 1925. <laughs> but I felt differently toward her. So? So I... Well, the next time I went to the Montmartre, she was sitting there with Gary Cooper. Uh-oh. I bribed the waiter to let me take his place. <laughs> so? So? <laughs> I stuck my finger into her soup and served it. But she was so busy looking and admiring Gary Cooper, she didn't see what I was doing. <laughs> I took it away before she had a chance to eat it. <laughs> and then, then? And then I finally won her serious in intentions. Yeah. And we were married in Beverly Hills. Wonderful. And that was 24 years ago, the happy beginning to one of Hollywood's marriages. Sit down here beside your bride, Ben. How do you know I didn't arrange the whole thing, Ben? <laughs> <laughs> From now on, your lives are truly as one. In 1936, you and Ben make your first appearance at Val Farnell's famed London Palladium, and the audiences immediately take you into their hearts. Your children were in London with you before the war, weren't they, Bibi? That's right. Yes, they were. All right. And uh, then, of course, 1929. With England, 39. At 39 at war, and 39, the children are in school in America, while you and Ben stand shoulder to shoulder with your London friends, facing fire and destruction from the sky. You were carrying on all this time on your mission of cheerfulness and mercy in the hospitals, in the streets, in your own home, and on the airwaves, tirelessly, endless. You make me sound very brave, but I was scared to death all the time. <laughs> Gal, you were brave in my book. You were brave. June 1944, D-Day. Just 15 days after the first waves of Allied troops set foot on the Normandy beachhead, you, B.B., become the first civilian woman to join the invasion. You entertain the troops in the Sky Blazers' very first show. A scant 600 yards from the enemy lines, you make recordings of the voices of the wounded as they're brought in from the battle. Personal messages of reassurance that you send to their loved ones back home. There are no words to express what those messages meant and still mean to those of us who received them. Now, a grateful voice, Phoebe, but one you have no way of recognizing. Here is one of the thousands of mothers whose hearts were gladdened by your work, Phoebe. 
She's the mother of Lieutenant Mark Mathis, now Mrs. Preston B. Scott of San Angelo, Texas, and Alexis, Illinois. And here is Mrs. Scott. Mrs. Scott, will you tell us about the record you received, thanks to B.B. Daniels? Well, it was made by my older son, Mark, after his younger brother, Jack, was killed on a flying mission. And uh, Mark told me that he was going to take over. This was on the record? Yes, he this said was this. on the record. It was a cheerful message, yes, wasn't it? it was. Full of youthful <laughs> hope. Yes, and... That's the last time that I ever heard of Mark. The last time he spoke to you. Mm -hmm. right. Oh, darling, Jack and Mark will never leave us. Right. They're as alive today, or more so than they ever were, believe me. Well, Mark Mathis lost his life in the same plane that carried his brother. There isn't a mother in the world who will not understand what that recording you made, B.B., means to Mrs. Scott. Thank you, Mrs. Preston B. Scott of San Angelo, Texas, Thank and Alexis. You, Thank you, darling. <laughs> Nineteen forty-six. For your service, B.B., Lieutenant General Ira C. Aker awards you the Medal of Freedom with two battle stars, which is awarded only for service under fire. In the same ceremony, in the same ceremony, you, Ben, receive the Medal of the Legion of Merit. Well, that just about brings us to the present, B.B., and to your current visit with your very best friend. Luella Parsons, and here's the lovely lady. Lovely. All the secrets. Oh, my heavens, now I know why you had my hair cut. <laughs> oh, the secret this gal has oh. had to keep, and Ben, you uh, were the matron of honor at uh, Bebe's and Ben's wedding, oh, weren't you? Very Luella? proud to say I was, and I'm the godmother of their beautiful daughter, Barbara Bebe. This what? is my dearest, best friend, Luella. Uh, She's the most wonderful, generous person in the world, and I adore her. You're a little prejudiced, I'm afraid. <laughs> no, I'm not. Tell not us not about uh, these good people, Luella. Well, I don't think I could tell all about them in one evening, but I would like to say that I have just been to London, where I visited them. And all you have to do when you want to go to their home is to say to a taxi driver, Take me to Ben and Beebe, and they take you right to their home <laughs> <laughs> on 18 South Street. Yeah. I can only say that Beebe and Ben have been my dearest friends. I've known Beebe a little longer, but girls never tell their age, so I won't say how long. Yes. Yeah. Well, it's out tonight. I had to tell well, mine tonight. Ben said it was okay. They really well, tricked me. <laughs> you know, their show, Life of the Lions, is the number one show in England. Oh, honey, now, come on. Well, uh, deservedly you know, so, too. Listen, and to this day, she treats me like a, a movie star. <laughs> well, she comes in you? and says, honey, my can't I run star. your bath water for you? She brings my coffee to me. It's the most wonderful thing well, in the world. <laughs> I'm sure the Lions are proud, too, to call you their friend, Luella. Life of the Lions, your top-rating radio show, uh, started in 1950. Who was in the cast? Uh, well, well, in the cast, of course, well, our children. Bibi and yeah. Ben and Barbara Bibi, their lovely daughter, and their handsome son, Richard. Life of the Lions brother. wouldn't be complete without the whole cast. So here from London are your two children to share this night with you, Barbara and Richard. Oh, no. oh. Selfless, courageous life. Come on, kids, gather around. Sit over here, B.B. Ben, get her down here. An example to all us in the past and the present and the years that lie ahead. Now, in a moment, we'll take a look into your future. Come on, just sit down here, Phyllis, darling mother. But right, well, look, B.B., we've just got to run here, but Hazel Bishop will see that you receive a 16-millimeter film of this program together with a 16-millimeter Bell and Howell sound movie projector oh, to play it on. Marshall Jewel commissioned David Miller, one of America's leading young artists, to paint your portraits. They will be hung in Val Parnell's famous London Palladium, the theater where you two made your first great success in England. 